someone's desire to have a contact with you depends on the impact you had on them on the previous contact. Uh, in the business sector, we call it customer retention or repeat customer. Much, much earlier in my career at CWG, the company that I founded, we got an order from ExxonMobil and some other people got part of that order. It was a huge order. And I was representing Dell and Dell was introducing something called a computer mouse. It wasn't always there. It was a new invention. So when I delivered the systems to ExxonMobil, Dell had given us mouse for each system as a promotion to promote people buying mouse from them. And I delivered the system with the mouse. And I remember the IT manager was extremely annoyed. I'm not going to pay for mouse. I did not order mouse. And I said, oh, sir, they are complimentary. They are promotional items from Dell. And he was like, what did you say? I said, they are promotion. And he said, well, the other vendors that delivered it made an additional request for mouse, and he's paid for mouse, and he's not paying anymore. He was very pleased with the integrity that we displayed because we didn't feel that we should charge for something for which we're giving free to give to, to the customer. And, and from then on, we became the more or less de facto supplier to, to ExxonMobil because they had also a global segment contract with Dell, which means that uh, Dell was their global customer and then we were fulfilling there. But my point being, the way that you interact with someone and how they feel determines whether they will be enthusiastic to interact with you again or to patronize you again. And so at every point in time, remember how you make someone feel. Remember how you make someone cherish. Remember how you make someone trust you. That is the only way that they will always look forward to coming back to you, whether it's by way of relationship uh, or by way of business or repeat purchases.